Good morning. Happy Independence Day yesterday. Any singed eyebrows or anything like that out there? We're all okay? All right, that's good. Yeah, oh, Jim lost all his hair. No. <laughs> all right, well, let's stand and sing together this morning. everybody it's so good to see you all it is still a little weird to see people in here 
uh, I like it. Don't get me wrong. It's very nice to see people in here. It's just a little weird after, I don't know, what was it, three months, almost four months of spending a lot of time up here preaching to an empty room or talking to an empty room or watching puppets do talk to an empty room. Just watching them, though, not doing anything else. Okay. Anyway, uh, we do have some announcements this morning. I'm very excited because we have new announcements this morning. How exciting is that? Um, but let's go through the old ones for just a moment. The first thing, again, just talking about Kids Blast. Uh, every Friday at 2 p.m. throughout the summer, we will be doing a Kids Blast on our Facebook Live. So if you have Facebook, check that out at 2, or you can go back and watch it any other time if you would like to. Um, but that will be available every Friday at 2 p.m. And yeah, so check that out, especially if you have neighbors or coworkers who have little kids or whatever. It's, uh, it's geared towards the younger kids, but anybody can watch it. I mean, I'm not telling you you can't watch it if you get to a certain age. Go for it. Um, but it is geared towards the younger kids. The other thing is crew is uh, every Wednesday night throughout the summer is going to be from 5.30 to 7, and that is our uh, 7th graders through 9th graders, and then from 7.15 to 9 o'clock is our 10th graders through 12th graders. So all summer long we are doing crew, and we'll have other events coming up, but I don't have anything to announce yet, but very, very soon I will, so be watching that. Um, crew stuff will be coming very soon. If you have any offering you would like to give today, we are still doing our offering box, which is in the back there by Scott. Scott, do you want to wave? There's Scott. Right behind him is the offering box. So um, if you would like to give today, uh, there it is there. Otherwise, we do have our online giving still available and still appreciated. That is on our website, unitedcovchurch.org. You can find all that there. So all right, now to the new stuff. How exciting. All right. I've been saying the same thing for three months. It's really exciting to have something new to say. Um, we have our semi-annual meeting coming up in two weeks on July 19th, and that'll be right after service, and I believe we'll just do it in here, right? So right after service, July 19th, whether we're inside or outside, uh, we'll do our annual meeting right in here. Please look at the, um, the newsletter that just came out. Uh, in there, there's an article that Pastor Dan would like you to read that he wrote about some of the stuff we're going to talk about at the newsletter. So if you're like, I don't have a newsletter, I can't read it. Well, we have it for you. There is some newsletters back on the back table as you leave the sanctuary in the foyer. So make sure you grab a newsletter before you leave and read that. There's some good information plus uh, and a little article that Pastor wrote that he would like you to read. So I'm going to give Drew just a second, because he doesn't know if I'm going to... Oh, no, no, never mind. I'm not going to do anything. All right. Okay, there's a work in progress for a men's Bible study. So more information will come. Uh, just be aware of that. But I'm not going to say anything yet. Does that work? Okay, cool. Awesome. Um, the other thing is that we have a garage sale coming up in August. Again, that date is to be determined. But sometime in August, we are going to do our annual church garage sale. So if you have anything sitting around that you want to get rid of, feel free to bring it here to the church downstairs in one of the classrooms. I believe it's the classroom on the left of the, if you walk into the playroom, it's the one on the left. There's a bunch of stuff in there, so put your stuff in there, and uh, we will have more information on that again as time comes, but just so you're aware that the garage sale is coming still this summer in August. Other than that, I think that's all I have right now for you. So... Oh, never mind. There's another to, one. I forgot to tell this to Zach to have him uh, announce this, but uh, we are taking in some new members, and so according to our uh, Constitution, we always have to mention it two weeks before in our semi-annual meetings coming up. So um, just for your information, Ryan Burr and Terry and Jenny Silverberg and Isaac Pearson are going to join our church, so we're really excited about that. And if you have any uh, questions on that or anything, let me know. But um, that's for your information. Awesome. Thank you. Cool. All right. Well, with that information, let's all stand up. And again, we're going to do this thing. I want you to make one big circle, wave at everybody you see in your circle, uh, and let's continue in worship together this morning. This next song has a section where it talks about um, there being new horizons and uh, 
God meets us there with new mercies to meet those new horizons. And we've definitely had lots of new horizons so far this year. And so we can bring all of our fears and doubts uh, to God when we meet with him. And uh, it says, because they can't stay long when we believe that God is the way, the truth, and the life. So as we get to that part in the whole song, uh, just be conscious about if you have any fears and doubts, let's bring them before God and lay them down there and they won't stay there very long. Through every battle, through every heartbreak, through every circumstance, I believe that you are my fortress, you are my portion. to 
such a privilege to bring everything that we can to you in prayer and to know that not only do you hear us but Jesus your son is at your right hand is also pleading for us and forgive us for the times that we do carry around those burdens and those fears and anxieties and the ones that we have the power to lay down uh, please help us to do so and the ones that are just so so nagging so hard I uh, just pray for healing for any kind of anxiety or fear that it might be we might be feeling today and just help us to lay that down at your feet and find the solace that you give and so we thank you for that in your name we pray amen Our first reading today is from uh, Daniel, chapter 2, verses 19 through 23. That night, the secret was revealed to Daniel in a vision. Then Daniel praised the God of heaven. He said, praise the name of God forever and ever, for he has all wisdom and power. He controls the course of world events. He removes kings and sets up other kings. He gives wisdom to the wise and knowledge to the scholars. He reveals deep and mysterious things and knows what lies hidden in darkness, though he is surrounded by light. I thank and praise you, God of my ancestors, for you have given me wisdom and strength. You have told me that we you you have told me what we asked of you and revealed to us what the king demanded. And from Philippians chapter two. Verses 15 through 18. So that no one can criticize you, live clean, innocent lives as children of God, shining like bright lights in a world full of crooked and perverse people. Hold firmly to the word of life. Then, on the day of Christ's return, I will be proud that I did, that I did not run the race in vain and that my work was not useless. But I will rejoice even if I lose my life, pouring it out like a liquid offering to God, just like your faithful service is an offering to God. And I want all of you to share that joy. Yes, you should rejoice, and I will share your joy.
Thank you, Casey. All right, well, I'm so glad that we decided to come in here today because it's just a little bit more pleasant than being outside today. But we're still thankful for the sunshine, and as we come to prayer this morning, we're going to pray for our nation with um, our celebrations that are going on for Fourth of July. And um, anyway, we we do need to lift up today. We need to pray for uh, Ed Sprague's family, and Ed is the the brother of Mike Sprague, and and so um, sadly, Ed's grandson Logan. Um, See, he, you know, committed suicide on this past Tuesday. So we need to lift up that family and pray for just comfort and blessing there. And and so that's a real heavy burden there. But we're going to lift them, lift them up in prayer. And then also, um, we need to pray for Jenny Tanner as she's having surgery. Is it Tuesday? I think is or tomorrow. So pray for that 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 would go really well. And. Um, So if you were with us last week, you know that we did talk about Daniel. We were looking at Daniel chapter 1, and in that chapter, Daniel and his three friends, Hananiah, Mishael, and Azariah, um, and later those three friends would get different names, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, So Daniel and his three friends were taken from their homeland in Israel, or in Judah, the nation of Judah, and sadly, uh, Babylon came, the nation of Babylon came, took over their land, and destroyed it, really destroyed everything, And, and then they were taken, Daniel and his friends, along with many others, were taken to Babylon, 
where they were to they were being uh, trained to serve in King Nebuchadnezzar's court. And but Daniel and his friends, even though they were being trained to work for Nebuchadnezzar and his kingdom, their first priority was the Lord. And they would put God first above everything else. And because of that, God would honor them and he would bless them. And God gave them special gifts and abilities and um, favor among all the other young people that were being trained. These young men, because they loved the Lord, God would, would put them or give them favor and blessing. But we read here in chapter 2 that one night Nebuchadnezzar had a dream that really disturbed him. And in that dream, he, um, it was so disturbing that he woke up and he called for all, all the magicians, enchanters, sorcerers, and astrologers, all the wise men to come and tell him about his dream. And so he called them and he demanded that they tell him what he had dreamed. As they stood before the king, he said, I have had a dream that deeply troubles me. I must know what it means. And then the, all the wise men, they said, okay, king, well, tell us, tell us what your dream was and we will tell you what it means. And the king said, he says, I'm serious about this. If you don't tell me what my dream was, and what it means, you will be torn limb, limb from limb, and your houses will be turned into heaps of rubble. But if you tell me what I dreamed and what the dream means, I will give you many wonderful gifts and honors. Just tell me the dream and what it means. And I'm sure that those wise men probably, you know, gulped pretty hard, and, and they're like, okay, well, just tell us what it means, or tell us what your dream was. We will tell you what it means. And he says, no, that's not how it works. You've got to tell me what I dreamed. And if you can do that, then I will believe that your interpretation of it will be accurate. So you can understand his logic. It's pretty smart. But he's asking a lot of these poor wise men. And they, they told him, they said, well, king, we can't do that. You, that's impossible what you're asking. And he said, okay, well, you're all going to die then. He doesn't, I mean, he just does what he wants to. And, and so he sent his, uh, the captain of the guard, his name was Arioch, and he sent Arioch to go and kill all the wise men of Babylon. Now, one of the difficult things was that Daniel and his friends were being trained to be wise men. And so they were among the people that were going to get killed. And so when Arioch came, and, and by the way, I'm not going to read through it all, you, I, and I do encourage you to read this chapter because it says it better than I can. But when he came, when Arioch came, Daniel said, what's going on? And when, when Arioch explained, Daniel went to King Nebuchadnezzar and he said, King, please give us some time so that we can tell you what your dream was. And fortunately, the king allowed them some time. Daniel went back to his three friends and they prayed probably like never before, because they're like, Lord God, if you don't tell us what this dream was and what it means, we're going to die. So you've got to tell us. And thankfully, God told them. He revealed it to Daniel. And this is what Daniel said. He says, praise the name of God forever and ever, for he has all wisdom and power. He controls the course of world events. He removes kings and sets up other kings. He gives wisdom to the wise and knowledge to the scholars. He reveals deep and mysterious things and knows what lies hidden in darkness, though he is surrounded by light. I thank and praise you, God of my ancestors, for you have given me wisdom and strength. You have told me what we asked of you and revealed to us what the king demanded. Well, praise God. The Lord showed them what it was. And so Daniel went to Arioch, the commander of the guard, and he says, please don't kill the wise men. Bring me to King Nebuchadnezzar, and I will tell him what his dream was. And so when, when Daniel went to see Nebuchadnezzar, Nebuchadnezzar said, so Daniel, can you really tell me what my dream was? And Daniel replied, there is no wise men, enchanters, magicians, or fortune tellers who can reveal the king's secret. But there is a God in heaven 
who reveals secrets, and he has shown King Nebuchadnezzar what will happen in the future. Now I will tell you your dreams and the visions you saw as you lay in your bed. Okay, so this is what Nebuchadnezzar saw when he was dreaming. He saw a statue in his dream. The statue had a head of gold. It had arms and chest of silver. It had a belly and thighs of bronze. And then the legs were of iron, and the feet were a mixture of iron and clay. And then as he was watching, he saw a mountain and out of the mountain came, um, a rock was cut from that mountain, but it was not cut by human hands or anything. It was supernaturally cut out of that mountain. The rock came and crushed the feet of iron and clay. It crushed all of these parts of the statue, and it just pounded it into bits, and then the wind came and blew it away. And then, um, and then that rock, that had destroyed the, the uh, statue grew and grew and grew, and it covered all the earth. So that was the dream. And when Nebuchadnezzar heard what Daniel had said, he was, he was amazed. And, and Daniel said to him, he says, okay, so king, that's what the, the dream was. Now I'm going to tell you what it means. He says, you... King Nebuchadnezzar are the greatest of kings. You are the, the head of gold on, on that statue. The God of heaven has given you sovereignty, power, and strength, and honor. He has made you the ruler over all the inhabited world and has put even the wild animals and birds under your control. You are the head of gold. But after your kingdom comes to an end, another kingdom inferior to yours will rise to take its place. So that would be the, the silver, okay, the arms and chest of silver. After that will come yet another kingdom, that's the bronze. And then finally, yet another kingdom will rise, that is the legs of iron and the feet of iron and clay. And the, the meaning behind the feet of iron and clay is that in that kingdom, uh, they will try to intermarry with, to, to strengthen their kingdom, but it won't work. Okay. Now, you, again, I encourage you to just read this for yourself. But during that kingdom, during the iron and so forth, during that time, there will be a kingdom that will arise, a supernatural kingdom that will crush all the other kingdoms. And it will go on forever and ever. It will never end. Well, when King Nebuchadnezzar heard the dream, when he heard the interpretation, he, he bowed down to actually to worship Daniel. You know, that was not the thing to do. But, but he said to Daniel, he says, truly your God is the greatest of gods, the Lord over all. Kings, a revealer of mysteries, for you have been able to reveal this secret. And the king appointed Daniel to a high position and gave him many valuable gifts. He made Daniel ruler over the whole province of Babylon. And by the way, Babylon was the most important province in the, in the Babylonian Empire, as well as chief over all the wise men. At Daniel's request, the king appointed Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego to be in charge of the affairs of the province of Babylon while Daniel remained in the king's court. Okay, so Daniel was honored, and you know, the Lord poured out, continued to pour out favor on Daniel and his friends. You know, the, the cream rises to the top, right? I mean, these guys, they were committed, consecrated to serve the Lord. And God just blessed them and gave them this position of power and authority, even in that kingdom of Babylon. Okay, so um, so what is the meaning? Again, what is the meaning? Well, as we've said already, the, the head of gold was Nebuchadnezzar and the Babylonian Empire. And it says that, as we read, uh, Nebuchadnezzar had... It says he was the greatest of kings. He was given power, uh, sovereignty, power, and strength, and, and honor 
It says here that he even put wild animals and birds under the control of Nebuchadnezzar. That's pretty weird. And I can't think of too many people that have had that kind of a gift. Maybe Noah probably had that. But that's a rare thing. And I don't know why God would have done that for Nebuchadnezzar. But he had such, uh, he had such power that he could even, you know, even wild animals would come under his authority. And Nebuchadnezzar did whatever he wanted, okay? He had no, like, he had, unlike other kings that came after him, Nebuchadnezzar had no checks or balances. He just did whatever he wanted to. If he wanted to put someone to death, he just did it. If he wanted to raise someone up, he'd do it. He did whatever he wanted. Now, as we look at the, the next group is, that, that came after him is the... Uh, the Persian Empire. And even those kings, they were great, but they had to live under the law of the Medes and the Persians. They, they couldn't just, and, we're, and, and as you read Daniel, you'll find out that those people, they had great power, but they were limited. They at least had to live under the law. Okay, Nebuchadnezzar didn't have any law to live under. He just did what he wanted to. Then after the Persian Empire... The, the next group that to come was was the Greek Empire. And they had, you know, they were limited in a way. Um, and then finally the Roman Empire came. And even Caesar still had to answer to the Senate and different things. But, you know, he was very powerful. But anyway, um, so what's the point of all this? Well, the point that God was showing Nebuchadnezzar was that these, these human kingdoms and empires would have their time and place. And so the Babylonian Empire, that which Nebuchadnezzar was like the height of its power, that empire would last for 87 years. And then it would, it would fade off into history. They'd be taken over by the Persians. The Persian Empire lasted for 209 years. And then they would be taken over by the Greeks. The Greek empire lasted for 184 years. And then that, then that empire would fall to the Romans. Now the Roman empire went on for a long time. And there's debate about how, you know, some people will say, well, it lasted for, you know, 1,400 years. But they weren't at the height of their power for that long. They, you know, they were, how do we say it? They had their times, but it lasted a long time. But it, it's pretty amazing that it lasted that long. But, but even that empire would eventually fade, okay? It's not here anymore. And, they, and all of these empires would would be blown off into the, the winds of time, you know. And, and now you can go and do archaeological work and dig up uh, evidence of these places. And, and yes, they were real, but they, they ended. And, um, but that empire, that kingdom that was supernatural, would, would last forever. And it's, it, and it's talking about the kingdom of God. And it said that it would come during the time of the Roman Empire, the, the legs of iron. And it would come at a time, and, and we know from uh, reading um, Luke chapter 2, every Christmas we read, you know, when Caesar Augustus was emperor, you know, uh, well, that, he was the Roman emperor, emperor at that time. And that's the time when Jesus Christ was born. And Christ came, and he went to the cross, and he died and rose again, and his, his kingdom will never end. It'll never end. It goes on and on and on. And we're here in America, and here we are today. Those other empires are long gone, but here we are, and we are celebrating Yes, 4th of July was yesterday, but we're celebrating our nation. And, hey, we're the greatest nation on earth, right? 
I mean, we, we have, uh, we're probably the most powerful nation. We have the most powerful military. I'm not just bragging. I'm just saying, you know, it's not bragging if it's true, right? <laughs> you know, I mean, we have, think about it. We, get, we, I mean, this is an aside here, but we eat better than probably those kings did back then. I mean, and we're just normal people, but we have spices that we can put red pepper flakes on our pizza. Well, those guys didn't even have access to that, right? We can, we can go to Nielsen's and buy whatever spice we want to. Those guys, they, they just didn't because of the time they lived in. Man, we're just so blessed. We have everything. We, we have clean water. You know, we just, there you go. We have, I mean, I could go on and on. We, we can get in, I can get in my car and I have the freedom to just go to Kentucky, you know. We can go any place. And it's a good road too. Yeah, I could go on about that. I've lived in places that didn't have such good roads. But um, anyway, hey, here's the thing. It's a great nation. Lately, we're, we're seeing some cracks in the foundation. Stuff's going on that is like, whoa. Things we didn't think could happen. And how long will America last? Not here to predict that. But I do know that every nation, every empire has a beginning and an end. And this will eventually go the way of the Babylonians or the Hittites or the... <laughs> You know, you name the empire, it's not here anymore. There, there's going to come a time when we're going to fade. But we don't need to live in fear. We don't need to live in fear because you see, just as, see, Daniel, he lived to see the fall of Judah. He lived through it. Later, he'd see the fall and the fall of Babylon, the rise of Persia, and he'd serve both the Babylonians and the Persians eventually. I mean, he saw all these rising and fallings of kingdoms. He lived through it. And we don't get to pick the times that we live in. You know, we, I don't know what's going to happen. Um, we don't know what's going to happen in the days ahead. But again, we don't live in fear. Like Daniel, we serve where we're at. Daniel served in Babylon. We serve in the United States of America. And just as he served to bless, he was to bless Babylon and eventually Persia, well, we're called to bless where we are time and place as much as we can. But we live under ultimately, before, even above that, we live under the authority of heaven and of the kingdom of God. And that's the eternal kingdom. These things will fade and have their time but the kingdom of God will go on forever and ever. And no matter what trouble we may go through, and I pray that the COVID and everything else will fade off into history. I pray that all the riots and stuff would calm down. I pray that, you know, I, I pray that a lot of things, and we do need to pray for our nation. We do need to pray for our nation because it's not as healthy as it has been. Just t talking the truth here. So we need to pray for our nation. We need to pray for revival. We need to pray that God would move. We need to pray for healing in our land in so many different ways. But first of all, we come under the authority of heaven. And we pray for healing because we, we serve, first of all, the King of kings and Lord of lords, the eternal one who will last forever and ever. And by the way, his kingdom will increase. And just like Daniel's vision, that rock grew and it covered the whole earth. It, it, and, and so, you know what? Even if the Chinese and Russians were to come in here and destroy our nation tomorrow, which I don't believe is going to happen, but if, if that did happen, guess what? We're serving the King of Kings and Lord of Lords and we're going to serve God wherever he, we're at whatever time we live through, whatever things we go through, we're serving the Lord. 
And it says in Isaiah 9, 7, it says this, of the increase of his government, we're talking about Jesus, of the increase of his government and of peace, there will be no end. On the throne of David and over the kingdom, over his kingdom to establish and sustain it with justice and righteousness from this time forth and forevermore, the zeal of the Lord of hosts will, will do this. Think about that. No matter what times we may have to live through, the, the, the kingdom of God is always going to increase. It's never going to go into retreat. It's never going to diminish. We might feel like, oh, where's the kingdom of God right now? It seems to be really retreating. It's not true. The kingdom of God is constantly going forward. Of the increase of his government and of peace, there will be no end. And even if you become afraid of world events and things that you begin to see, remember that he's the prince of peace and, and the increase of his peace, there will be no end. And we can say, Father, give me your supernatural peace. Jesus, you're the Prince of Peace. Fill me, Holy Spirit, and God will fill us up, and he will cause his kingdom to continue to advance. So I want to encourage you today, yes, it's a little bit of a bummer to think that America is not going to last forever, and I'm not predicting when that's going to end. I certainly hope that it's long after I'm gone. But whatever happens, first of all, we live under the authority of heaven. And I believe that as we come now to Holy Communion, I believe that this is kind of a declaration for us. And we think about the, our forefathers in our nation, you know, the Declaration of Independence when they, when they said, hey, this is who we are. We're Americans. Well, I believe that when we come to Holy Communion, we are making a declaration. And we are saying that we are part of the family of God. We're part of the kingdom of God. And we are under his lordship. He is the king of kings. We are his children. We're part of his family. And so um, I'm just going to read this. It says, friends, this is the joyful feast of the people of God. Many will come from east and west, from north and south, and sit at table in the kingdom of God. This is the Lord's table. By the way, the kingdom of God is a deeper connection that we have than even nationalism. If we're connected in the spirit, that's a deeper connection than just, I'm not belittling being a good citizen of America. It's, it's important. But we have Hey, we're, we're related to people from all over the world that are Christians, whether they live in Russia or China or South America or Australia or wherever they live. If they're in Christ and we're in Christ, we're brothers and sisters, and we're connected by blood. That's by the blood of Jesus, right? Okay, this is the Lord's table. Our Savior invites those who trust him to share the feast he has prepared. According to Luke when our risen Lord was at table with his disciples, he took the bread and blessed and broke it and gave it to them. And their eyes were opened and they recognized him. So as we come to this table, we come and we acknowledge that Jesus Christ broke his body for our behalf. He took the punishment in his body that should have been ours. He paid for our sins. Jesus Christ, as we, as we take the, the cup, the blood of Christ can wash away every sin. So if there's anybody here today and you say, well, I don't know that I'm part of the kingdom of God yet. I don't know if I'm, I don't know that I've gotten into that kingdom. Well, I want to tell you that the way you do get into that kingdom, the way you become a citizen of heaven is by receiving Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior. And so what we do is we ask for forgiveness for our sins. We ask God to forgive us, and we invite Jesus into our life. And the Holy Spirit will come, and he'll come to live in you, and you'll be born again. You'll be born of the Spirit. So that's what that's about. So we're going to say a little prayer right now, 
And if you're here and you want to receive Jesus as your Lord and Savior, or maybe you want to rededicate your life to the Lord, we're going to say a little prayer together. And first of all, uh, before we say that prayer, we're going to just ask God. Silently, we're going to come to him and we're going to confess our sins to him. We're going to admit our sins to the Lord. So let's just pray together. Heavenly Father, we thank you that you are the King of kings and Lord of lords. And we thank you that through you, there is forgiveness of sins. And there is that gift of eternal life. So God, as we come to the Lord's table today, as we come to Holy Communion, right now, God, we come to prepare ourselves. We come to ask for forgiveness to anything in our lives that, where we have sinned against you. And Father, we know that every one of us has fallen short of your glory. We've sinned by some of the things we've said, some of the things we've done, some of the things we've thought. Lord, we've sinned by failing to do some of the things we should have done. All have sinned and fallen short of your glory. So God, right now we come and we just confess to you those sins. So just silently, wherever you're at, just ask the Lord. Just confess your sins. Just admit your sins to the Lord. So, Father God, we just lay these sins before you, and we ask you right now, God, forgive us. And we thank you, Lord, for the promise of Scripture that tells us that if we confess our sins, that you are faithful and just to forgive us our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. We thank you, Lord. And if you're here today and you need to receive Jesus, you can just silently in your heart pray this prayer with me. Dear God, please forgive me for all my sins. Lord Jesus, I invite you into my heart. Help me to be the person that you made me to be. Thank you for saving me. Thank you, Lord. Amen. Amen. So I'm going to ask our servers to come on up here, and we will have, uh, as normal, we'll have two stations that, that you can come and receive Holy Communion. And so, folks, I just want to say this is, church, this is a declaration of our faith of our citizenship in heaven. So as you're ready to come, please come. You're welcome to receive the Lord's Supper. When the night comes, when you're all alone, when there's trouble stirring in your soul, if your world is falling apart, just hold on for the morning break to dawn. Come and lay your burdens down to the place where freedom is found. At the feet sorrow weighs on your heart when you pray for answers the answers never come for every tear that you cry there's a promise he will make your burdens lie come and lay your burdens
so good and I just want to say that if you're here today and maybe there's an area of your life that you, you feel like you know I know that God is the king of kings and lord of lords but he's I'm having a really hard time giving this one part of my life over to him and letting him be lord of it uh, you know if you need some extra prayer on that you're welcome to come up you don't even have to tell us what it is God already knows what that thing is or maybe you have a different prayer or whatever just know there's prayer available up here, and we'd love to pray with you and talk with you and encourage you. But let's just end today with this benediction. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious unto you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace. God bless you. Have a wonderful week.